Hello everyone, take two on Saturday, April 2nd, 1158 AM. Um, my first one did not work out, so here we go again. Um, as you can see, my background's different today. We have St. Therese up there. I don't mean to cut her off, but I can't work when my screen's like that, so she's with us though anyway. Um, so somebody has come to do my bathroom ceilings, so that's why I'm banished to my living area, my living room area. And today's a special day for me. It's actually the, I guess, the 33, 33 year anniversary of my baptism. So I will later on be renewing my baptismal vows. Um, our priest recommends that, that that's a good habit to get into, to know your baptismal anniversary and to renew your vows every year on that anniversary. Because when we're infants, um, our parents do it for us. So we don't really know. Obviously, we, we reap those benefits, but it's not a, a conscious thing. So it's nice to be able to do it every year on a conscious level. And so today I want to pick up where we left off in regards to the epochs, the epochs of the church. Um, and so we've talked about the fifth epoch and how the fifth epoch began with Martin Luther and the Protestant Reformation and is an age marked by corruption and apostasy and hypocritical people um, who sit there and, you know, give the appearance that they're religious but are actually not and believe hypocritical and false teachings. And we see this in the book of Sardis, or I'm sorry, the book of Revelation in the letter to the church of Sardis. Um, the fifth letter corresponds to the fifth epoch as described by Blessed Holzhauser. This is where we get these epochs from. It's from Blessed Holzhauser. And we see how it's marked with dead works how you have the, you give the air you know the aura of being religious but in reality your works are incomplete and that's the age we live in um in that book that letter talks about hold to your traditions that have been passed down to you it talks about how there will be a few saved who did wash their gowns and obviously i'm paraphrasing you can go back and watch that video or read it yourself um, and that's a direct reference to confession, to those who still will cleanse their souls in the sacrament of confession. And so then we talked about, in, in the, one of the last videos I did, it's called the Tears of Mary. Um, I talked about the consecration of Russia and what will happen next. And so I really see the consecration of Russia kind of marking this next period of purification. And so the transition between the fifth epoch and the sixth epoch will be marked with these great chastisements in this purification. And these chastisements will be just um, on a natural level. They will be man-made because man has fallen away from God. So that will culminate in great wars, probably a great World War III, uh, which will first start with these civil wars and then escalate into a world war. Um, plagues biological warfare, famines, disease. And so we see, we see the beginnings of all these things. We've seen the beginnings of all these things for a while. And then a great apostasy, the rise of a, a false church, a government sanctions, false religion where there are no sacraments. And this will definitely be in France and the surrounding countries and maybe on a broader level. An apostate religion in which the bishops will, in all their weakness in order to save themselves, will go along with it and many souls will be led to hell. There will be no valid sacraments. Um, we see many other prophecies talking about the Pope having to flee Rome or the Pope being martyred or suffering greatly, being held as a prisoner in Rome, in the Vatican, and just all these chastisements from, from men. And then at the height of it, God will step in with divine chastisements. So then we get into fire falling from heaven, even bigger natural disasters. And obviously the most um, fantastical one, probably the three days of darkness. And then right around this time, um, there will come a character, two characters on the scene. One will be a holy pontiff. One will be a holy great monarch. And they will rule over on a natural temporal level 
a, a brief, what I think to be considered brief, um, period of peace. But that can't happen until everything is purified. And so it can't happen until um, we get rid of these corrupt governments and things like this. And why I think God would choose a monarch to reign over his Eucharistic reign, to reign over the triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, an era of peace, whatever you want to call it, is because that is the form of government's governance that is most pleasing to him because it is the one that at least takes his will ultimately into consideration and also heaven is a monarchy as above so below to take a page out of the pagan playbook but really um we are to be made we are made in the image of god we are to reflect heaven not reflect hell and even hell is a hierarchy even all the demons there it's a very hierarchical it's very um satan at the top and then lower demons kind of like a pyramid so we see that happening um all right so let's jump into this right quick I, th I think that's all i wanted to say about that transitionary period and a lot of these periods kind of they're not set in stone they're not cut and dry they kind of overlap oh and i know a lot of people do not like this great monarch prophecy and do believe the catholic great monarch to be the antichrist and obviously as the only way to differentiate between the antichrist and the great monarch is to be catholic and understand the sacraments because the great monarch is going to come promoting the sacraments whereas the antichrist is going to come destroying the sacraments further and so if you're not catholic you're not going to be able to you're going to be deceived is basically what's going to happen and these great deceptions have already started on both sides of the aisle the left and the right so you have protestants and the orthodox um you know claiming to want to live by christian values but rejecting the pope then you have on the other side of the aisle the liberals in the church and the liberals in society not wanting to live by christian values um, but in some cases not really rejecting the pope but trying to make him into more of a figure of peace sort of thing and so this great deception has already started it's a re it is a religious deception just as it says in scripture and it will only intensify and get worse so that if you are not a practicing catholic who has spiritually prepared yourself going into the tribulation, you will fall for it. That's why Jesus says, um, many will be deceived, I'm paraphrasing, even the elect, if it were at all possible. And that's already starting. There's many false prophets. Um, so let's jump into this. We'll talk a little bit about means of protection during these chastisements. And then we'll talk about the rise of this great monarch, um, the period of peace, and then the next video after that will be the seventh and last epoch. And so Holhauser, um, Blessed Hol Holzhauser, described the sixth and the seventh epochs as being short. And so people get, get it mixed up when they talk about the end of the world. And, and I think a lot of people think it's just in a day or in a short amount of time, but it's not true, it's a process dying is a process everything converting is a process and so there are many there will be many days of the lord um there will be obviously one final judgment in which jesus himself comes back but prior to that all of these things have to happen like jesus has told us so let's talk about it let's jump right into it means of protection during these chastisements blessed anna maria taji Bless candles for the three days of darkness, devotion to the rosary, and to not look out during the days of darkness or you will be struck dead. St. Gaspar del Buffalo, devotion to the cross, the precious blood, and the immaculate heart of Mary will be a protection in times of tribulation. Marie Julie Jeheny must have blessed 100% beeswax candles for the three days of darkness. darkness. Nothing else will light. Their light will be the only thing that will protect us from the fire falling from the sky and the lightning. And so I found that interesting. So now she sees the three days of darkness and the fire and the lightning as all one event. Um, and they will, and this is important, these candles will protect us 
from the demons that will be let loose through the earth. And so, if you remember my last video, I talk about, you know what, comets, fire falling from the sky, wars, yeah, sure, all that is super scary, but those destroy the body. What I'm terrified is not being prepared for the demons, because demons deceive. Demons urge you to sin. Demons can influence you so that you choose wrong and your soul can be dragged into hell. Demons, um, that's a whole nother ball game, and that is what, as Christians, we need to really be concerned with, in my opinion. Okay, um, those not devoted to the sacred heart will die. Devotion and faith in Our Lady will be the strongest protection. And so we see this going right along with my Immaculate Heart will triumph. Those devoted to Mary will, will in turn help her Immaculate Heart triumph. It's very tied to that. The rosary, the cross, holy water, the sacred heart, and Our Lady will be shelters. Also, the prayers of protections attached to the purple, purple scapular, which I will do another video on, but the purple scapular has been given to us for specific times of tribulation. Elios Ilmear must have blessed candles and pray. Also, practical prepping includes sealing all windows, doors, with black paper to keep the poisonous dust out. We must not look outside. Um, Sister Agnes Askawawa is Our Lady of Akita visionary. Only Our Lady will be able to save us from the calamities that approach. Devotion to Our Lady and the Rosary will be our main protection during these chastisements. Marie Julie Jeheni was shown new sacramentals to protect us during these times of plagues and chastisements. The purpose, purple scapular of benediction and protection, the cross of pardon. The Medal of Our Lady of Bonnet Garde, also remedies for chastisement, plagues, and diseases. We must be prepared for suffering and to carry the cross as the persecutions and the chastisements will be tremendous. All Christians are called to enter the holy nov novitate of the cross. The saints um, gave Mary Julie Jeheni spiritual lessons on how to love the cross and suffer well, which we can all profit from spiritually. And heaven encouraged her to pray and spread devotion to the rosary of the holy wounds. Those devoted to the holy wounds rosary will help bring incessant victory to the church. Those devoted to the holy wounds will be protected as if by a lightning rod. And again, I just want to reiterate, um, I don't know if I said it in this video or the last version that failed. So I'm sorry if I'm being repetitive. I can't remember which what I said in this short segment. Um, the consecration of Russia, in my opinion, really marked this marker between the, the fifth, you know, the majority of the fifth epoch and the beginning of, you know, the last poor little segment of the fifth epoch, which will, is this transitionary period, which is purification. The great monarch will come before or just about the time when the last of the greatest depopulating chastisements hits or will hit the earth. Also prophecies of the three days of darkness. Um, Prophet Joel, the sun and moon will be darkened before or during the arrival of the unstoppable armies of the Lord. Seems to indicate the army foretold about the great monarch. Um, Prophet Isaiah, sinners will be wiped out, infidels will be brought low during the day of the Lord, when the sun and the moon are darkened. St. Ephraim the Syrian. Uh, and just as a reminder, I, this is not information I have compiled. This is from Great Monarch slash Angelic Pontiff Prophecies.blogspot.com. I'm not trying to invent the wheel. Um, somebody's obviously done a tremendous amount of research, and I've been blessed enough to stumble across it. So I just want to reiterate that. I'm not taking the credit. Um, but I am putting the timeline together a little bit from other things I've researched. Okay, so St. Ephraim the Syrian, God will send fire from the sky to wipe out the evil armies from the east. The Roman kingdom slash empire of peace will be established afterwards. St. Hildegard of um, Bingen talks about a comet. Vataguero prophecy um, talks about two days of darkness. Blessed Elisabetta Canori Mora, hell will literally be let loose during the three days of darkness. Blessed Anna Maria Taji, the three days of darkness will cleanse the earth. St. Gaspar del Buffalo, the three days will wipe out all of the church's persecutors. The earth will be covered with bodies. Um, Sister Rose of Columba of Taji, 
St. Mariam Bordi, the three days will wipe out the evil cause so that only one-fourth of mankind will survive. Marie Julie Jehenny, most detailed prophecies to date, which I've already read on the three days. So we have to understand the three days in the supernatural chastisements aren't going to happen until the man-made issues are at their peak, at their worst. So we have to look for things such as um, a world war. We have to look for things such as um, the apostate religion gaining traction and even um, heretical religions gaining traction such as Islam, such as the Orthodox. Okay, um, in, the, in, real, in man-made persecution of the church. That's another one. <clears throat> and then God will step in with his supernatural chastisements. All right, so Father Don Delindo Rutolo, the great monarch and angelic pontiff, will seem defeated at first, but a great punishment strikes the earth, and the apostates convert to their kingdom of love. Isn't that interesting? And why the three days of darkness? Well, apparently it will be a repeat of the plagues that hit the ungodly pagan nation of Egypt before God's people were set free. And so if we remember back to the video I did on Our Lady of Bueno Suceso, Good Success, she talks about this. There has to be a, a purification. There has to be a great war to dissipate this darkness that is holding the church in bondage. And if you don't think that the Pope and the clergy and the Vatican is being blackmailed right now, then you aren't paying attention. I mean, there is so much just, it's hard to be a Christian and it will become a Catholic and it will become increasingly more hard to be a Catholic. Um, and then God will step in. Okay. Okay. So then another repeat of the three days of darkness before Christ church is set free again through the age of peace. And the Lord said to Moses, stretch out thy hand towards heaven, and may there be darkness upon the land of Egypt, so thick that it may be felt. And Moses stretched forth his hand towards heaven, and there came horrible darkness in all of the lands of Egypt for three days, Exodus 10, 21 through 22. As our Lord reminds it us, but when these things begin to come to pass, look up and lift up your heads because your redemption is at hand, Luke 21, 28. So... The great monarch and angelic pontiff will not reign until the earth is completely chastised with all these dreadful punishments. So we may see them battling. We may see a rise. We may see the great monarch and the great pontiff come on the scene prior to um, the final purification, prior to the last chastisements, but they will not reign. I think one of the prophecies says that the great monarch will fight for 40 years. So he will fight until he's 40 or something. Maybe not 40 years, but he'll fight until he's 40. So maybe about 20 years if he starts fighting when he's 20. Um, fights till he's 40. Um, and then he'll reign. So there's going to be this period of pushback led by the great monarch and the great, the holy pontiff. Um, and, and they will be assisted by the angels. They will be assisted by God's chastisements as well. And then once the purification is complete and everything has been put under the footstool of Jesus, quite literally, then they will reign. Okay, St. Ephraim the Syrian, the age of peace established by the Roman kingdom comes after the fire and destruction. That's Guero prophecy, blessed Catherine of Rassini. Rassini. Um, Abe Matei says the monarch emperor comes after the wars, bloodshed, major upheavals, after the time France and Europe is on fire. Blessed Elizabetta Canori Mora, the holy pope destined to restore the church will come after the dreadful punishments. Can you go stir the soup, the stew on the stove? Sorry, I'm talking to my daughter. I got beef stew on the stove. Um, blessed Anna Maria Taji, the angelic pontiff will come after the three days. He will be miraculously pointed out by Saints Peter and Paul. Apparition of Our Lady of La Salette indicates that a great king will ascend the throne after the great disorders and the destruction of Paris and Marseilles. Then religion will flourish again through the world. Venerable Mother Marie Josepha of Borg. The promised king will come after the chastisements. His destiny is to repair and regenerate all. St. Mariam Bordy, Borde. France will become the queen of all kingdoms. 
but after the chastisements. Marie, Julie, Jehenny, France must be punished and completely cleansed first. Then the great monarch will come to free the pontiff. This will be the triumph of Rome. And so that's interesting. We see um, the, the pontiff being held hostage or something happening to him and the great monarch coming to free him. And then that will, mark, that will establish the kingdom of love after the earth is chastised and the triumph of the church, the triumph of the immaculate heart. Elios Ir Meyer saw an emperor crowned by the Pope who had fled. Interesting. So that's another, he comes to free this Pope and maybe bring him back to Rome or something. He sees three crowns and an old crown from the South honored once again. The great peace comes at this time and the wars are over. So there will be, again, this great war coming about, you know, World War III or something like that. Those who suffer through the great time of punishment are considered martyrs. Their sufferings are not in vain and have a great purpose. They form the seed for the renovation that is coming. So it's, it's very important to understand redemptive suffering and how to offer our suffering up to God for his purposes and for our salvation. And that is really just the exact message I got when I touched uh, Mary's veil. It was this profound understanding of sanctification through suffering and how suffering could not be averted. And, but within that, Mary is with us and she suffers with us. And she suffered when she was here on earth um, in human form as well. Apparitions of heed. Many will curse God because of the sufferings, but they are sent to save mankind. They are a means of expediation and will prepare the world for the renewal. The great monarch will come. Now, this is obviously dates um, are subject to change. So there's one prophecy, St. Francis of Paola. The great monarch will, in that, there's something interesting about this I'll get to, but the great monarch will come in the mid-1800s. Um, but other prophecies also foretell he will come sometime in the midst or after the chastisements in the 20th or 21st century. Um, Madre Madalena de la Vera Cruz, sometime in or after the mid-1800s, after the dogma of the Immaculate Conception is declared. And again, we go back to Our Lady of Good Success with that, right? Venerable Bartholomew Holzhauser, who's responsible for this whole timeline, after the century of evil with strange new weapons are unleashed, so sometime after the mid-20th century or into the 21st is when the great monarch will come. Now, I want to um, read what Marie Julie Jeheny said about this. She says, The promised king was revealed to her. He lived and died in the 1800s, yet she was told she would not see his triumph or that of the church until after his death. She died in 1941. She was told he, w um, he will one day be returned to his subjects by God's power alone in a completely miraculous manner. So that's very interesting because we, taught, we hear again in Our Lady of Good Success, if men will not do the job, if men will not fight for the church, God will send his holy angels. Um, so maybe in another miraculous way he will send somebody that you know we resurrect somebody who has died who knows maybe that will be part of this massive conversion of heretics a leader will first come but he will not but he is not the great monarch apparently this leader the father of the people will die from a stab wound um saint Caesarus of aries this may have already come to pass mercy will reign again after the time of justice our lord will Build a kingdom. It is coming faster than mankind realizes. M Mary Julie Jeheny. The Sacred Heart wishes to send the king, so the reign of the Sacred Heart may begin. Our Lord will cut the time of punishment short for this purpose. Apparitions of heed. Don Delindo Rutolo, the kingdom of love will come after a punishment of the earth. It is the first triumph of the church. Blessed Pius IX, his teachings prophetically indicate that God withholding his punishment and allowing the evils against the church to happen for so long is a sign in and of itself. The coming marvels and miracles that will usher in the age of peace will be as great in proportion to the previous evils that attempted to destroy the church. It will be a period of triumph. And that's very biblical where 
sin is, grace is all the more. And I think of, some people say it's Mary Magdalene, but the woman who um, was a prostitute, and when Jesus entered a home, she wiped, she cleaned his feet with her hair and her tears in expensive oil and was forgiven. And Jesus, you know, says she has shown great love. And so where sometimes where there is great sin, there's great grace as well. So that's just the way it works. Um, France will be saved by Christ in a miraculous manner that the whole world will witness. It is the great monarch who will come to the rescue. Origin of Alexandria, Saint Methodus of Olympus, Saint Cesarus of Arles, Abbot Wyndon de Otrano, Saint Vincent Ferrer, Ferrer, and he's like dubbed the angel of the apocalypse, Saint Vincent. Blessed Bernard de Bustis, a good Christian king, will aid the angelic pope. Dionys of Luxembourg, in a time of tribulation, God will raise up a great ruler that will perform remarkable deeds and aid the church. Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich, a rider on a white horse, will come to the rescue. Abbe, Ma Abbe Mate, when all seems lost, a miracle will happen. The Russian emperor, this is so fascinating, when all seems lost, a miracle will happen. The Russian emperor will stop his invasion and convert. The French king emperor will ascend the French throne. Abbot Eugenio Pe Peche, Abbe Vaseline, a great miracle will occur when all seems lost, and then a king after God's own heart will ascend the throne. St. John Bosco sees a warrior with a white banner rescue the venerable old man. And that's probably the pontiff. Marseille Lachans, um, sister... Marie France, Our Lady, Queen of France, Marie Julie Jehan, everybody talks about her. The great Catholic monarch will be a king of France, um, and there's many prophecies, many people who have prophesied that he will be a king of France, including St. Hildegard, the, when the lily claims, once again claims the throne, there will be peace. St. Joachim of Fior, um, St. Francis of Paola, Venerable Bartholomew Holzhauer, he says he will be a descendant of St. Louis the Ninth, meaning he will be heir to the French throne, but also a descendant of an imperial German family. And once you start putting all these prophecies together, he appears that he will have some mix of maybe French, Spanish, um, German. He'll be kind of like a mix, you know, not purely French or whatever. Sister Marie de Jesus, the reign of the Sacred Heart will not happen until the king of France consecrates France himself and the royal family and establishes an annual feast day celebrating the events. Our Lady of La Salette implied that French throne is the one the king will ascend. Marie Julie Jehenny, she was given the most detailed prophecies, obviously, of the great French monarch on par with the prophecies of St. Francis of Paola, if not greater. Um, of interest, Bernard Remold indicates the great monarch will not be a native German king. However, he will be a Holy Roman Emperor. The Holy Roman Emperors were chosen from an elected German king and or they came from Austria in later periods, i.e. the Habsburgs, a tradition that continued for centuries. But Remold says the German people will try to restore their German throne by electing a simple farmer or foot soldier but he will not reign long, only a year. The foreign king that comes and drives the enemy back out of Germany apparently takes the German throne by force of arms and becomes the Holy Roman Emperor. It is he who will bring the Age of Peace. So, um, that's interesting. The great monarch will be a hero to the Royal House of Austria. That's Madre Madalena de la Veracruz. He will be the firstborn son, that's St. Francis of Paola. He will have been exiled from his country, France, when a youth. St. Cesarus of Aries, Abbot Weirden de Antero, Marie-Julie Jehenny, child of exile, will return. Venerable Mother Marie Josepha of Borg, the exiled prince, will return. Cure of Ars, peace will come after the announcement of the return of the king. This indicates he will be exiled and will return. He will become a great saint. According to St. Francis of Paola and others, um, Our Lady Queen of France, he will seem more like a priest than a monarch. 
Mary Julie Jehenny, he will be like another St. Louis the Ninth. He will be beloved and protected by Our Lady as a son. He will recover and restore the French throne of the lilies, the white flowers, St. Cesarus of Aries, St. Catalus, and St. Um, Hildegard. Um, he will destroy those who destroyed the lily, and that would be the Masons. Um, that's Father Bowton. Blessed Catherine of Rossini. She saw an angel with a lily representing France. Sister Rose of Columba of Taji, the bloody civil wars will not stop in Europe until the white lily ascends the throne of France, the descendant of St. Louis IX. Again, we see that. Venerable Mother Mary jo Joseph of Borg, a son of St. Louis. Um, Mary Julie Jehenny, he will restore the white flag of France. The lily, the lily will resurrect. He will throw out usurpers to the French throne. That's St. Vincent Fer Ferrer. Uh, Perry, Necteau, and Orleans, a hated name to France, will be a usurper before the great upheavals and restoration. Abbey Matei, a usurper will be on the throne during a republic. The usurper will rule via a constitutional monarchy, but it will not be long. The great monarch regains the throne. Abbe Souffrant, there will be a Bonaparte usurper. Mary Julie Jehenny, C3 contenders, the Orleans contender seems the most prominent, but he will be put down in confusion and shame, and he will not hold the throne. Signs and wonders shall manifest at the great monarch's appearance and entrance of his armies, showing him to be the chosen king of God, and that's St. Hildegard of Bingen. St. John of Capistrano, signs in the sky. Um, Abbe Matei. Abbe Souffrant, great miracles and signs will show who the great monarch is. Abbot Eugenio Pecce, there will be a miracle, then the French shall defeat the pa defend, sorry, the papal see. Again, we see this connection. Abbe Voslin, a great miracle will happen, many will convert, the evil ones will be crushed, and the king after God's own heart will ascend the throne. Mary Julie Jehenny, he will be called a man enveloped in miracles. And so obviously, again, people say that they liken him to the Antichrist because we are to be on the lookout for false signs and miracles. But as Catholics, we know if somebody is promoting the sacraments, it's not the Antichrist. Details of some of the miracles. The Sacred Heart and the Dove of the Holy Spirit will appear with the banner of the Sacred Heart and reveal who the true king is. The details of the battle between good and evil will appear in the sky. There will first be warning spots or marks in the sun. Then there will be frightening fiery streaks of blood in the sky representing the evil side. That will seem to win. There will also be one bigger black band representing Satan and how his followers outnumber those of Christ at this time. This sign apparently will happen on a Friday. These blood red signs will be suddenly won over by a bright light from the west, more beautiful than the dawn, which will appear on a Saturday between five and six. The armies of the soldiers of the cross will march out of Brittany. And it's very interesting because there's a basilica, I think it is, I forget what it's called, dedicated to St. Michael um, in Brittany. And there's a whole, look it up, because there's a whole prophecy and like lore associated with that legend, I should say. Um, following this white light and meet up with the armies of the king, the light will turn into a bright square star of victory with a crown and scepter in the center that will be visible to the people of the earth. The king himself is described as radiant star coming out of exile and will be a sign of Christ's power to the Jews. The signs of his coming will also resemble the terrible signs of Good Friday. The sky was darkened, the earth shook, and the dead arose and appeared to many. Mary Julie Jehenny. Our Lord will give a miraculous grace of light. It will be the star of Bethlehem that guided the wise men who sought the newborn king. There will be those who will see this light as a blessing. For others, they will see it as darkness. And this is the apparitions of heed. And many say that this is the warning. Maybe um, or maybe not. The Lord will assemble his army, cleanse the earth. Then there will be a time, and so by warning, I mean the illumination of conscience. I, I don't know. I stay away from that because I, I honestly, I don't have strong opinions about it. But here's another explanation to some of the things that 
are um, said to be the illumination of conscience. All right, sorry. Um, I have a lot of activity going on in my house today. I need to get a drink, but I didn't realize he was going to be doing both of my bathrooms at the same time, so I might regret this decision because I have nowhere to go to the bathroom currently. So that's interesting. Um, anyway, where were we? Talking about um, this grace of light that people refer to as a universal illumination of conscience. The prophecies that are in line with the great monarch don't refer to it as an illumination of conscience. They refer to it as the type of a star of Bethlehem that guided the wise men who sought the newborn king. Um, and there will be those who will see this light as a blessing. For others, they will see it as a darkness. And that's from the apparitions of Heed. The Lord will assemble his army, cleanse the earth. Then there will be a time of plenty for his people. Um, sounds like the great monarch's armies in the age of peace, prophet Joel. The great Catholic monarch will be a warrior. And oh, just so we know, just to make clear who the great monarch is fighting, um, it's these precursors to the Antichrist, these horrible Antichrist type figures, these horrible New World Order type figures, these horrible um, false prophet type figures that are trying to destroy the church and are trying to create their own apostate religion and apparently who may succeed in doing that. Um, these anti-God, anti-Catholic people. That's who. So, um, you know, a lot of people are looking for the Antichrist right now. And I was one of these people until I came across some very, some lots of prophecies. Um, there will be an, a period of what we're seeing right now of Antichrists, Antichrist people. But the ultimate final Antichrist will not, according to this, happen, come until after the great monarch and after the era of peace. The rise of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Okay. So he will assemble great army. All right. The great Catholic monarch will be a warrior and come with a fire and sword. St. Bridget of Sweden is another one who talks about this a lot. He will assemble great army armies. St. Francis of Paola, a new military order called the Cruciferi or Crossbearers that will last until the end of time. And so let's talk about this military order. Um, there will be three, according to prophecy, three um, sections. There will be the soldiers, the ones who do battle. Then there will be the hosp hospital hospitalers, um, the ones who provide support as far as lodging, and whatnot, and then the priest, the order of priests. And it will be the last of the church. Um, because all the other ones will have been destroyed by the period leading up to his reign. Birch Tree and Rhineland Prophecy of 1701. The white prince bearing the cross on his chest will be so organized in his army that no one will try to stop him. Madre Madalena de la vera cruz blessed Anne catherine emmerich a great legion followed the white rider abe Matei, the emperor king will have an army but it will be mostly made up of foreigners mary julie jehenny however his followers followers will be few when compared with the evil ones yet the good will triumph with the king the victory will be completely miraculous the christians will raise with the king the christians will raise an armed resistance against their persecutors saint hildegard of bingen bingen and so these are like heretic persecutors these are new world order persecutors that sort of thing the king's army will gather near ashen the rhine the birch tree and rhineland prophecies the king's armies will come to a river where the soldiers of the cross will join him doesn't specify which river Turks, Muslim invaders and Russian invaders will be driven back and not allowed to cross the Rhine in Cologne by soldiers wearing a cross on their helmets. A Northern Prince will convert in the Russian emperor. And so this goes right along with the conversion of Russia. Abe Matei. The Russian emperor will want to invade France and take it, but he will be stopped by a miracle and recognize the hand of God and convert. Abbe Soufrant. The great monarch will help him have his claim to the Russian throne recognized. How amazing. The Russian emperor will gather his army near the Rhine, but will not cross it. 
Spain will also suffer a civil war, threat of the king being dethroned, but will ascend eventually. Okay. The king of Spain will also be an ally. Spain will be involved with the Great War, but it will only occupy territory to restore order in the churches. Um, the great monarch will also be helped by a holy monk who attended a seminary in Brittany or the Vendée and will also be helped by a noble from Lore Inferior who will be a Breton general. He will enter and aid France first. Um, he will come during the third crisis period of France and he will come and he will some to come from a land that is close to Italy. Seem to come, I think it's supposed to, from a land that is close to Italy. He will come from the east, go from the south, but also is described as coming from the north of the borders. The battle to put the great monarch on the throne will be terrible. There seems to be two different fights. That's Mary Julie Jeheni. The enemies of the monarch will be blinded by an act of God. The Christian force will be triumphant, St. Hildegard and uh, Mary Julie Jeheni. The fights to put the great monarch on his throne will be more terrible. Will be more terrible than the battle to free the Holy Pontiff in Rome. So it seems that he frees the Holy Pontiff, then fights for the throne of France. The great peace will be brought about by the company of Jesus, the cross, and Mary. Blessed Bartholomew Camby of Seleucia. Could this also be a reference to the Cruciferi foretold by St. Francis of Paola? Bernard Rembard Spielbahn sees armies with a cross on their helmets driving back the infidels and invaders. Mary Julie Jeheni, soldiers of the cross plus the armies of the king. Heaven will then clean the blood-stained earth after the chastisements with a heavenly dew. Mary Julie Jeheni and Father Botten. Why restoring the throne of France is so important um, has to do with the history of the Flower de Lys the holy destiny of France. Um, and we're not going to get into that right now, but it's very fascinating. So you should look that up. I've done some research on it, but not enough that I want to talk about right now. Um, but I will maybe do something on it eventually. He will be crowned with three crowns. Um, okay. He might have a connection to Lombardy. Poland will have a king again and so will Germany. He will be the last and also the greatest of his royal line. The last lily that sits on the throne of France. He will have the gift of discernment of souls, St. Francis of Paola. France will rule until the end of time, St. Remy, St. Mariam Bourdais. When France once again becomes the queen of all nations, her peace will be established on a firm rock and never shaken. Mary Julie Jeheni, France will never lose the faith. It will rule until the end of time. Once it has brought in the triumph of Christ, will never leave it in the power of the wicked. When it is renewed, it will no longer be called France, but New France. Our Lady Queen of France, France will be called New France. Mary Julie Jeheni, her vision seemed to support this. Our Lord said to her, he's going to rebuild a New France for his mother, Our Lady, and also calls it her New France. And the Holy Spirit in St. Michael calls the renewed country France. It will last until the end of time. He will rule his empire even after the second coming of Christ. I don't know how that works, but that's Venerable Bartholomew Holzhauser. He will um, then come to Rome's rescue, for Italy will also be affected by war. He will come to the aid of England and Italy. Um, the great monarch and angelic pontiff are destined by God to restore the church and the world's age of peace. Um, renew the devastated priesthood, build the churches, and raise the crosses that were toppled. He and or the pontiff will be given infused knowledge from God on how to help regenerate mankind according to God's will. Father Don Delindo Rutolo, a great pontiff will be raised up by God. He will face the renegade Christians and perverts attempting to destroy Christianity from its foundations and will restore the church. And I'm thinking of the Orthodox. I'm, I'm thinking of the Protestants, the um, all kinds of heretics. Don Delindo hints that man destined to be the pontiff will be alive during the troubles. He will be humbled greatly, but will be raised up when the time comes and become the ruler of the earth like Joseph of Egypt. He also foretells a great monarch who will 
work with him, they will they will both be miracle workers. The king and pontiff will establish the kingdom of love, which is the first triumph of the church. Identity. He will have a limp or be lame. Birch Tree Prophecy of 1701. An identifying feature, he will be lame of foot. He will be the last of his royal line of France. St. Morris, Rabinus, uh, St. Hildegard. He will be a bourbon. Abbe Matei, a prince of the legitimate line of France, a.k.a. a bourbon. Um, he will be exiled and then return. Marie Julie Jeheny, the rejected and abandoned one. Henry of the Cross, Henry V, the child of exile, the one they call the miracle child. All the prophecies refer to him and no other. He is reserved for the great epochs and will be returned to his subjects. He will not be any other Bourbon descendant, nor a descendant of Bonaparte, nor of Louis, Philip, and Orleans, in particular, not of Orleans. He will be a descendant of Nan not be a descendant of Nandrove either. Saint Michael will march with his armies. So that's a very interesting theme that keeps coming back up. It will be a somebody who was dead and miraculously comes to life. He will be honored. Um, Woe to those who oppose and resist the angelic pontiff. God will punish them even while still in this world. And this is the pontiff now, not the monarch. Um, let's talk about the pontiff. The angelic pope. Okay, we will know who the angelic pontiff is when the great monarch appears first and restores the papal tiara. Which is so interesting because the papal tiara right now, well, I don't have to tell you, you know. The angelic pope will be elected from those who have escaped the persecutions. The angelic pontiff will be elected amidst a great electoral struggle. He may be a young pope. Um, when the angelic pontiff will appear during the conjunction of the four feast days, possibly 2038, blessed Tamuso de Folino, uh, during the early part of the 21st century, after the destruction of Paris. Um, St. Peter will point him out after the wars and bloodbaths, after time when hell is let loose. Blessed Anna Maria Taji, after the French Civil War and the Three Days of Darkness. St. Peter and Paul will point him out. After the Civil War of France and the king appears to save him, the angelic pontiff will bear the sign of redemption on his forehead, possibly a cross. The Holy Pope will be an Italian, not from Rome, but close to it. Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich. Apparently, he will be someone no one expects. He will not be a Roman. Apparition of Our Lady of La Salette. The angelic Pope will be a saintly man. Bring about great conversions. Blessed Bartholomew. The angelic pontiff will have the gift of miracles. Blessed Anna Maria Taji. The angelic pontiff will be the, from the Franciscan order. Blessed Bartholomew Saluzzo. The angelic pope will be honored by the princes and the people, blessed Anna Maria Taji. He will preach barefoot. Woe to those who oppose and resist the angelic pontiff. God will punish them. He will institute the reforms the other faction rejected during the apostasy schism, i.e. restore the traditions of the church. Oh, many people said that. He will reform the church. He will perfect the Council of Trent. Interesting. Um, the angelic pontiff will bring a great peace and restore the church. Mother Mariana of Jesus, Our Lady of Good Success. God will send a prelate who will restore the spirit of the priest. But the people must pray for him to be sent. So pray. But we can't pray because these prophecies have been lost and people don't even know, you know. Blessed Anna Maria Taji, the blessed Pope will end all heresies and schisms. The great pontiff will bring all the people back to God and restore God's law in the world. After the great monarch liberates Rome and receives the holy pope's blessing, he will go with his armies back to France and the great sanctuary of the cross that will be built in Brittany on the site of Mary Julie Jehenny's cottage. Interesting. He will plant the white flag, prostrate himself on the ground, and give thanks to God for all the prophecies that foretold his reign. Um, he will rule over everything. Okay. He will bring about conversions, root out sex. St. Bridget of Sweden. Bring peace to the world. So let's, um, let's talk about the world will return to the cross, victory of the cross. He will work in union with the pontiff. 
I want to just pause this and scroll down. I want to talk about what the actual Age of Peace will look like. All right. So Rome may be weak, weak in temporal power, but it will no longer be corrupt Babylon and shall forever hold its spiritual dominion under the Holy Pope. Rome will enjoy great peace and become the spiritual head of the world. Blessed Joachim de Fior. Heresies shall cease. Heretic schismatic Christians shall again be under the Church of Rome and the Pope. That's many people have said that. All false, false cults will be abolished. Protestants will convert. All men shall convert to the church. All peoples will be brought to God's law under the great pontiff and great monarch. A great Protestant country in the north of Europe will convert and be the greatest ally in converting the world. Apparition of Our Lady of La Salat. There will be 12 cardinals who will become pillars of the church. They will be preachers. Their holy lives will be an example for the world. Russia will convert and help bring peace to the world. How interesting. The Russian emperor will convert and help spread Catholicism to all Russia's own states. A uh, civil war will break out in Russia, but majority party leaders are defeated and commit suicide. How awful. The people convert. They honor the cross and the mother of God anew and sing the Easter song. The great monarch will tear down pagan temples and raise up churches, rebuild broken altars. China will convert after a major war when it will be completely occupied by several nations. Morocco and Egypt shall give the church a synagogue. Not quite sure what we mean, is meant by that. He will conquer and retake Constantinople, Istanbul. And that's St. Bridget of Sweden. And what's so interesting about that is um, Hagia de Sophia. Hagia Sophia um, has recently, it was a cathedral. It goes back and forth between a mosque and a cathedral. And now it's like become secularized, but it's mostly a mosque again. Um, so that's interesting. However, the greater part of the Jews will not yet convert. Their conversion is reserved for the absolute end time. The great monarch's reign shall last circa 20 to 50 years. Sources have different lengths. Possibly the length of his reign is conditional, and we have to take into account regarding descriptions what seem short to heaven will seem long to us, but this is the general length of his reign when taken all together. Andrew of Salos, 32 years. Bernard de Bustis, 20 to 25 years. Venerable um, Bartholomew, 56 years. Apparition of Our Lady of La Salette, a short time. Mary Julie Jehenny, 25 to 30 years. And they want to note in here, the age of peace will not last a literal 1,000 years. This is a misinterpretation of the 1,000 years of the apocalypse. The Catholic Church has declared a literal interpretation of the 1,000 years is a heresy, it is known as the Chilius Millenarium Heresy, um, and we're not going to get into that. But yeah, the thousand-year reign is from the time of Christ, and it's a um, a spiritual reign that comes about in each person via baptism and renewal. The great monarch will place his crown on on the cross on Calvary. Okay. Um, St. Hildegard says that the earth will be fertile at this time. It'll be simple. There'll be an agricultural, I want to give my input on this. There, it will be an agrarian, um, economy. It's going to be low tech because the chastisements are going to wipe out the grid, going to wipe out everything. Um, so it'll be a period of building back. It'll be a period of rebuilding and, um, really focusing on faith because you know catholicism spirituality and i'm assuming since it, it will not be completely rid of sin or anything like that so sin and demons and satan's influence will be greatly diminished but it will not be gone completely until the end of time and so i'm assuming while the good people are building back the church and everything the bad people are going to be, again, rebuilding the technology and rebuilding whatever, um, which will play into the final Antichrist, in my opinion. So the Antichrist, so this, that's what the six ages. It's marked by a complete conversion, a Eucharistic reign, um, a renewal of a, a simpler lifestyle, an agrarian economy. The soil will be fertile. 
Um, sin will be diminished. The corrupt laws will be gone. The abortion and things like that will be gone. Um, the gay pride parades will be gone. All of that will be gone. All the anti-Christ, anti-God um, people and ideologies will be gone. And then after this period, and I look at this period as an opportunity to regroup, for the saints to regroup, for the saints to once again fill themselves up with the graces from the church, the graces from the Eucharist, the graces from Mary, the Immaculate Heart of Mary, and the Sacred Heart of Jesus, um, and to unite completely under Rome in preparation for the final persecution, which is the Antichrist. So that will be a video for another time. The next video will go into the rise of the Antichrist, but I guess we can get into a little bit of it now. So the, the sixth age is really marked by the rise of the monarch, the great monarch, his reign of 20 to 50, maybe 100 years, who knows. And then he retires, basically. He lays down his sword scepter, I think is what it says. And then the rise of the Antichrist, the end times Antichrist, um, will mark the end of the sixth age. And then the seventh age, the seventh epoch, is marked by the reign of the Antichrist and the final coming of Christ. And so the Antichrist will appear when the great monarchs reign. Age of peace comes to an end. And he is defeated, according to those who follow this timeline, the second coming of Christ. And I do prescribe to this timeline personally. St. Paul the Apostle speaks of a catacomb um, withholding the arrival of the Antichrist. And it does seem to be maybe a great monarch type of person. He will be defeated by Christ himself on the last day. Um, and the arrival of the Antichrist is possible as Christians have gone lax during their prosperous age of peace and will begin to doubt the faith. And I think it's going to have something to do with the technology as well. The rebuilding of technology as the apple dangling as the forbidden fruit to these people who are living quite literally in, with no electricity and, and living like the Amish sort of, sort of thing. And so they'll maybe sell out the faith to make their physical lives a little bit easier. Um, so yeah, I'm not going to get into too much of that. I guess I'll probably, there is something else I wanted to read though. Here it is. St. Francis of Paola um, was called the Wonder Worker, born on March 27th. Wow. Uh, 1460 at Paola, a small city near the Tyrian Sea in Calabria, Italy. Uh, he left home at Paola to live as a hermit. He was especially influenced by St. Francis of Assisi. And so I find it interesting that he's been giving all these revelations and the it's prophesied that the great holy pontiff will be of the Franciscan order. And I want to read what he has a lot to say on this and he writes letters. I don't think I can read them all, but these letters are preserved, right? I wish, maybe I'll read them all. Oh, there's so many. There's not that many. I should read them. All right. So the first letter, the original of the following letter is allegedly preserved as a precious relic by the respectable family Bene Benedetti in the city of Spoleto. Most esteemed Lord, through the grace of the Holy Spirit and through your merits, but not through my virtue, the spirit of prophecy is granted to me often to foretell most wonderful events in relation to the reformation of the Church of the Most High. From your Lordship shall be born the great leader of the holy militia of the Holy Spirit, which shall overcome the world and shall possess the earth so completely that no king or lord shall be able to exist except he belongs to the sacred host of the Holy Ghost. These devout men shall wear on their breasts and much more within their hearts the sign of the living God, namely the cross. The first members of this holy order shall be natives of the city of dot dot dot, it doesn't say, where iniquity, vice, and sin abound. They shall be converted from evil to good. From rebels against God, they shall become most fervent and most faithful in his divine service. That city shall be cherished by God and by the great monarch. 
for the elect and the beloved of the Most High Lord. For the sake of that place, all holy souls who have done penance in it shall pray in the sight of God for that city and for its inhabitants. When the time shall come out of the immense it shall come of the immense and most right justice of the Holy Spirit, his divine majesty wills that such city become converted to God and that many of its citizens follow the great prince of the holy army. The first person that will openly wear the sign of the living God shall belong to that city because he will through a letter be commanded by a holy hermit to have it impressed in his heart and to wear it externally on his breast. And that would be the holy hermit of Brittany. That man will begin to meditate on the secrets of God about the long visitation which the Holy Spirit will make and the dominion that he will exercise over the world through the holy militia. O happy man who shall receive from the Most High the greatest privilege. He will interpret the hidden secrets of the Holy Ghost and he shall often excite the admiration of men by his revealed knowledge of the internal secrets of their hearts. O rejoice, my Lord, because the prince above other princes and king over other kings will hold you in the greatest veneration, and after having been crowned with three most admirable crowns, will exalt that city, will declare it free in the seat of the empire, and it shall become one of the first cities of the world. I say nothing more, kissing your hand together with the inhabitants of dot 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 whom I beg, when they shall see this letter to receive it as prophecy. I remain perpetual servant, Friar Francis de Paola, from the House of Paola, 5th February, 1482. This letter is second letter originally allegedly preserved in the city of montalto in calabria my excellent lord you and your consort desire to have children you shall have them your holy offspring shall be admired upon earth among your descendants there will be one who shall be like the sun amidst the stars he shall be firstborn son in his childhood he will be like a saint in his youth a great sinner then he will be converted entirely to god and will do great penance his sins will be forgiven he shall become a great saint he shall be a great captain and prince of holy men, who shall be called the holy uh, cruciferi of Jesus Christ, with whom he shall destroy the Mahometan sect and the rest of the infidels. He shall annihilate all the heresies and tyrannies of the world. He shall reform the church of God by means of his followers, who shall be the best men upon earth in holiness, in arms, in science, and in every virtue, because such is the will of the Most High. They shall obtain the dominion of the whole world, both temporal and spiritual, and they shall support the church of God until the end of time. I say no more. 25th France, 1485. Third letter. My excellent Lord, O great treasurer of the Holy Spirit, O new Abraham upon earth. After these words, he gives a long and severe reproach, reproach to ecclesiastics for their covetousness, idolence, and want of charity and zeal for the spiritual welfare of the people. Then he says... Let the kings and princes in Christendom be ashamed of themselves who live without charity. God has granted them means to lead a good life, and they are bad. Having their hands shut up with the cursed lack of avarice, they are stingy in good works and um, prodigal in doing evil. They spend more than what they have in vanities and in useless things in order to indulge their passions, oppressing their poor subjects. O oh, wretched, unhappy men! Do you know what vanity is? Do you understand that your people are the creatures and subjects of the Most High God? They are men like you, children of Adam like you. Um, all right. So, to you, I, O oh, comrades of Judas Iscariot, to you I say, evil prelates, greedy for robbery, to devour the sheep of Jesus Christ brought, bought with the most precious blood. What care do you have of the holy fold of Christ? Oh, he's still yelling at them. Hold on. Woe to you, because God Almighty will exalt a very poor man of the blood of the Emperor Constantine, son of Helena, in the seat of Pepin, i.e. King Pepin of France, who shall on his breast wear the sign which you have seen at the beginning of this letter. Through the power of the Most High, he shall confound the tyrants, the heretics, and infidels. He will gather a grand army, and the angels shall fight for them. And that's what Jesus says in um, Our Lady of Good Success. They shall kill all God's enemies. O oh my Lord, that man shall be one of your posterity because you come from the blood of Pepin. Okay. The head and captain of these holy servants of God shall be one of your posterity. Great reformer of the church. Okay. I'm not going to... They are kind of long. Let's read five and six. 
This one's preserved again in Montalado and Calabria, Kingdom of Naples, and has been copied by John Baptist Francesco, a public notary. This is 26th of March, 1490. My Lord and brother in Jesus Christ our Lord, may his divine majesty reign in every place, namely in heaven, upon earth, and even in hell. How spiritually blind are those persons who, having no thought about the things of God, fix their end in earthly objects, wretched men, by far worse than the very beasts which are guided by their senses because they cannot have reason. But when men abandon the use of their reason, they become brutalized. Hence, they shall, never be, they shall ever be in confusion. Let, therefore, the princes of this world be prepared for the greatest scourges to fall upon them. But from who? First from heretics and infidels, then from the holy and most faithful crucifixion elected by the Most High, who, not succeeding in converting heretics with science, shall have to make a vigorous use of arms. Many cities and villages shall be in ruins with the death of innumerable quantity of bad and good men. The infidels also will fight against Christians and heretics sacking, destroying, and killing the largest portion of Christians. Lastly, the army, styled of the church, namely the Holy Crucifixion, shall move, not against Christians or Christianity, but against the infidels in pagan countries, and they shall conquer all those kingdoms with the death of a very great number of infidels. After this, they shall turn their victorious arms against bad Christians, and shall destroy all the rebels against Jesus. They shall reign and dominate. The founder um, be one of your posterity, but when shall this take place? When crosses with the stigmas shall be seen, and the crucifix shall be carried as the standard. May our blessed Lord Jesus Christ reign. Um, <clears throat> sorry. Let us all rejoice who are in the service of the most high because the great visitation and reformation of the world is approaching when there shall be only one fold and one shepherd oh there's seven letters all right i'm reading both and then i'm ending it six letter my excellent lord the time is coming when his divine majesty will visit the world with a new religious order of holy crucifix who will carry a crucifix or the image of our crucified Lord lifted up upon the principal standard in view of all. This standard will be admired by all good Catholics, but at the beginning it will be derided by bad Christians and infidels. Their snares shall, however, be changed into mourning when they shall witness the wonderful victories achieved through it against tyrants, heretics, and infidels. Many wicked men and obstinate rebels against God shall perish. Their souls will be plunged into hell. This punishment shall fall upon those transgressors of the divine commandments who with new and false doctrines will attempt to corrupt mankind and turn men against the ministers of God's worship. The same chastisement is due to all obstinate sinners, but not to those who sin through weakness, because these being converted, doing penance, and amending the conduct of their life shall find the divine mercy of the Most High full of kindness towards them. Very important. So if you're struggling with a weakness, that's for you. O holy cross bearers of the Most High Lord, how very pleasing you will be to the great God, much more than the children of Israel. God will, through your instrumentality, work more wonderful prodigies than he has ever done before with any nation. You shall destroy the sect of Muhammad and all the infidels of every card of every ass of every sect. You shall put an end to all the heresies of the world by extinguishing all tyrants. You will remove every cause of complaint by establishing a universal peace, which shall last until the end of time. You will work the sanctification of mankind. O holy men, people blessed of the most holy trinity, your victorious founder shall triumph over the world, the flesh, and the devil. May God and all his saints be praised. That's 7th of March, 1945. Seventh letter. This is the last one. My excellent Lord, let your soul rejoice for his divine majesty manifest through you such wonderful signs and great miracles according to what I, by God's will, have often and again written and foretold to you. One of your posterity shall achieve greater deeds and work greater wonders than your lordship. That man will be a great sinner in his youth, but like St. Paul, he shall be drawn and converted to God. He shall be the great founder of a new religious order different from all others. He shall divide it into three classes, namely military knights, solitary priests, most pious hosp hospitalers. 
this shall be the last religious order in the church, and it will do more good for our holy religion than any other religious institutes. By force of arms, he shall take possession of a great kingdom. He shall destroy the sect of Mohammed, extirpate all tyrants and heresies, and shall bring the world to a holy mode of life. There will be one fold and one shepherd. He shall reign until the end of time. On the whole earth there shall be only twelve kings, one emperor, and one pope. Rich gentlemen shall be very few, but all saints. May Jesus Christ be praised and blessed, for he has vouchsafed to grant to me, a poor unworthy sinner, the spirit of prophecy, not in an obscure way as to his other servants, but has enabled me to write and to speak in a most clear manner. I know that unbelieving and reprobate persons will scoff at my letters and will reject them, but they will be received by those... Oh, this is so awesome. So if you believe this, check this out. I know that unbelieving and reprobate persons will scoff at my letters and will reject them, but they will be received by those faithful Catholic souls who aspire to the possession of heaven. These letters shall infuse such sweetness of divine love in their hearts that they will be delighted in perusing them often and in taking copies of them, because such is the will of the Most High. In these letters, it will be found out who belongs to our blessed Lord Jesus Christ and who does not. Who is a predestinate or a reprobate? Much better will this be known through the holy sign of the living God. He shall be a saint of God who will take it, love it, and wear it. Nothing more occurs to me. Friar Francis C. Paola, 18th August, 1946, 1496. Sorry. Um, and so we are in such a time where this is such a hopeful prophecy because it's so hard to be a Catholic. It's so hard to be a practicing Catholic. And we just... Obviously, our ultimate hope is in heaven and in Jesus, but it would be nice to have the church restored to a glorious state, and it would be nice for it to be a little easier to practice the faith. <laughs> um, and so I'm going to end it here. This is a long video, and it's a Saturday, and I'm probably just going to post this one right away. Um, and yeah, that's all I got. 1.20 p.m. Joan of Arc Media out.